What's up guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we are going to revisit a national park uh, that we actually went to last year. However, this time we stayed in a different spot, a different campground. So we really enjoyed it. Can't wait to show it to you guys. So stay tuned. So the national park that we're going to talk about is Shenandoah National Park. Um, this time we stayed in Loft Mountain Campground. So a really nice thing that attracted us to this particular campground uh, is that all the sites are pull through sites. Um, the site that we booked was site E159. That site had a very nice private campsite area. It was also very open to the sky. There were no trees. Uh, so we were able to get uh, a lot of sun on the solar panels and uh, really, uh, really worked out well uh, for our stay there at Shenandoah. Yeah, because all of the sites are no hookups. And there's a total of 207 sites and that includes 50 tent only sites. It's the largest campground in Shenandoah National Park. So we had to uh, fudge a little bit when we were making the reservation online on recreation.gov. Uh, our fifth wheel is, is just under 34 feet long. It's, it's 3310, so essentially it's 34 feet overall. Um, but it wouldn't let us book the site if we put in a 34 foot trailer. Uh, we did a little research. Um, we looked at some pictures from other people that have stayed there um, on Campendium, and there were some larger rigs that, that made it in there. So uh, we just put in that our, our fifth wheel was uh, 33 feet and it let us book the site. Uh, the site was plenty big enough to fit the fifth wheel in the truck but I think the reason they kind of prefer smaller rigs is that the sites, the way the pull through sites are, uh, they turn pretty they turn pretty sharp so you pull in and then you have to make kind of a sharp turn to get back out. Um, some of them are a little bit tighter but uh, we had no issues getting our ours in there. We saw some bigger fifth wheels in there. We saw some big class A's in there. So it's not impossible, but um, it, it will be tight if you're in anything anything over, you know, 34, 35 feet. It, it's gonna be a tight to get into. Um, getting to the campground, super easy. Skyline Drive, uh, one of the absolute best roads you could ever ask for to drive up in the mountains. Um, it is curvy in places, but it's just extremely well maintained. Uh, they do a great job keeping the limbs and everything cut back away from the road. So, you know, it's it's not uh, like some of the typical mountain roads that you think of where, you know, you, you don't have a lot of room and uh, the lanes are super narrow. So Skyline Drive is, is one of our favorite roads to drive on. Um, the views are beautiful. Huge overlooks to pull off so you can pull off. Uh, they're big enough to pull off with your, with your trailer or if you're in a motorhome big enough to pull off with in the motorhome and take in the view. Uh, just a, a very, very uh, user-friendly experience for those of us in, you know, in RVs that are traveling up Skyline Drive. So like Erica said, all these sites are dry, uh, no electric, no water at the site. Um, we, there's different areas throughout the campground where you could get water. Uh, we tried two of them to try to fill up our jugs and the water wasn't on. So. We ended up going out uh, to the dump station to get our water, which isn't a big deal. It's um, it's it's right outside the campground, so it's it's close. But uh, we had to go back to the dump station. We didn't drive around and try all the water spigots around the campground, so there may have been some that were on, but the ones on our loop right there by uh, E Loop were off when we were there. And we had a pleasant surprise when we went to the dump station one time. We were greeted by several deer that were just grazing in the parking area around the dump station. Yeah, we uh, haven't seen a ton of wildlife uh, when we've been to Shenandoah in the past. So uh, we saw a couple of deer in the campground that morning. And then uh, when we went down to the dump station to get water, there were a lot of them down there. So um, they weren't skittish. They, they didn't mind us uh, sitting there taking some pictures and video of them. They were, they were happy to oblige. So uh, we got some pictures and video of them and uh, it was nice to see that. We also had uh, some deer come up through our campsite um, where 
where uh, our site was at is right directly across from some tent camping area. Um, there's also a little trail that you can go down to. It'll take you to the uh, to the Loft Mountain, uh, I believe it's the Loft Mountain Loop Trail that kind of loops all the way around the campground. Uh, part of that is actually the, uh, the Appalachian Trail runs around there. So um, a lot of excellent hiking opportunities from that location there uh, without even having to leave the campground really at Loft Mountain Campground. Speaking of some great places for hiking, we decided to go on the Black Rock Summit Trail. It was just over a mile, 1.1 miles, so Dylan was a fan of that, and it was a beautiful day for a hike. Yeah, we uh, parked, so that one's outside Loft Mountain Campground. It was about four miles from the campground, uh, four to five miles to get to the parking area, but it's a 1.1 mile loop. It's, it's not strenuous, it's very easy to do. Um, you know, we were there in the fall time, so the leaves were just, you know, just changing colors, and it was a beautiful, beautiful walk up to the summit. Uh, once you get up to the summit, there's some little rock outcroppings that you can kind of walk out on and get just an overall view of the whole area. Uh, we went early. We've told you guys in our past videos that we're big fans. If we're going to do something like this, a hike or something that might be a little more crowded, we try to get out early. That's what we did on this hike and uh, it paid off. Uh, there was hardly anybody up there once we got to the top. We were able to sit there, let Dylan have a snack, um, and just kind of recharge a little bit. And we got some beautiful pictures and video from up there on top. And then from there, on our way back down, uh, we really started to run across uh, a pretty heavy amount of traffic that was on their way up. So again, you know, going early really paid off for us. and. Uh, that's definitely what we recommend, you know, anytime you're going to do a hike or something that might be more popular and get out early, you know, get up, uh, get, get moving and get out early and uh, you won't regret it. It's going to just be a much better experience than fighting with other people that are, have the same idea you have trying to get up and, uh, and get to these areas. And another bonus, if you have a dog, they are dog friendly on this hike. Yep, that trail was dog friendly. Uh, not all of them are. In Shenandoah National Park. Uh, there's only some limited trails that you can actually take dogs on. Uh, so this one was dog friendly so we took Nix with us. She definitely enjoyed getting out and uh, going on a hike with us. So one quick note about Skyline Drive. Um, if you're coming in uh, to Loft Mountain Campground and you're coming from the north, uh, you're going to want to make sure to avoid the Mary's Rock Tunnel. So Mary's Rock Tunnel is uh, just south of the Thornton Gap entrance to the park. Um, so you're going to want to avoid going in that entrance um, if you're going to go to Loft Mountain because you that would mean you would have to uh, go through that tunnel. That tunnel is only 12 feet 8 inches to the center so unless you're in a smaller travel trailer or something like that, uh, something that's short, lower, then you can get through there um, but if you're in a fifth wheel, I mean 12.8 is really really borderline. Um, the specs on our fifth wheel is 12 feet 10 inches. That's what it says from the factory. Uh, when I've been up there and measured it with it hooked onto the truck, we are we are right at 13 feet. So uh, that's with it hooked up to the truck and, and all loaded down the way we drive down the highway. So it's right at 13 feet. That's measuring to the top of the air front AC. So that's uh, that's too close for comfort. Uh, there's no way you know we would attempt to try to go through there. Um, maybe if you stayed in the very center, it might be just a little bit higher, but still um, too too close for comfort. So. Uh, you can go down, you can go in some other entrances there that will get you to Loft Mountain Campground. Most GPS, uh, most GPSs are probably going to route you around that tunnel anyway uh, as you're coming in because if you hop on Skyline Drive, the speed limit's a lot slower. So most of the time your GPS is going to route you around that tunnel. But just be aware, that's uh, the only tunnel that you have to worry about right in that area. So uh, just be aware that, that there is a low tunnel uh, if you're hauling, you know, if you're in a motorhome or if you're in a bigger fifth wheel. So another thing a lot of people like to know about is how is the cell signal? So in national parks, it's usually sketchy. Um, and, it, and it is at Shenandoah as well. There's places that have better service than others. But when we were doing our research, Loft Mountain said there was some, so we were hopeful. And um, we were pleasantly surprised that T-Mobile was actually better than Verizon. Yeah, we uh, actually saw a review on Campendium that uh, said that that someone was there and I uh, was actually surprised by how good the T-Mobile service was, the speeds of it, they were able to stream. So um, we gave it a shot with our T-Mobile hotspot when we got there. The T-Mobile hotspot, um, I'm glad we had it because our Verizon phones had little to no signal. Uh, it was kind of off and on. Uh, T-Mobile 
was solid the whole time. Uh, there were times when it was a little slower, maybe during heavy traffic times or something like that. It seemed like it was uh, maybe not as fast as it was when we, the first day we got there, it, it seemed to be working superb. Uh, but after a couple days, uh, we did notice a few spots here and there, a few times where the speeds were slower, um, but still, we still had signal. Overall, um, really shocked and surprised at how good T-Mobile service was uh, up there in Loft Mountain Campground. Yeah, and we've had our, we've had our T-Mobile hotspot through FMCA for about four months now, and we've been really happy with it. So if you're interested in learning more about that, we'll leave a link to that video that we did on that. The T-Mobile hotspot has been, I mean, it's been solid. We've been very, very happy with it, and uh, we're glad we made that switch over. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up. Uh, that's Loft Mountain Campground. We would very much recommend uh, staying at this campground if you're gonna be in Shenandoah National Park. Uh, last year, we stayed at Matthews Arm Campground. We'll also leave a link to that video. So if you wanna see what Matthews Arm Campground looks like, you, know, you can check out that video, um, but both of them, uh, we, we boondocked at both places, uh, no hookups. Matthew's Arm was a little more of a challenge because of their, uh, because of where we were at. It was a little harder to get sun onto the solar panels, um, but Loft Mountain Campground, uh, the site we were in there, site E159, was, was an outstanding site, and uh, we would definitely try to book that site again if we ever went back to Loft Mountain Campground. We really liked that site. We appreciate you guys watching. And we'll catch you guys down the road.